welcome to this demonstration of the Energy Web Flex Toolkits. The Flex Toolkits relate to the integration of distributed energy resources into energy markets. Flex thus encompasses several components, assigning digital identities to customers and their assets, establishing secure communications with those assets, allowing those assets to participate in markets, activating selected assets, and calculating compensation for activated and delivered services. The Flex toolkits are designed to relate to flexibility generically. Any specific implementation, therefore, could relate to specific types of flexibility, including to provide frequency regulation, alleviate congestion on distribution feeders, or meet any other requirement for more or less load on the system. This video shows how two different types of users could interact with the Flex platform. The first type of user is grid operators or others that would want to procure flexibility. The second type of user is aggregators, prosumers, or other types of users that would want to offer flexibility from behind the meter energy assets. This is meant to be as generic as possible and not a limitation on the types of businesses or customers that could have roles in any particular implementation. With that said, let us begin. Our first step is to see how users can register. Imagine we have a prosumer who wishes to install a battery storage system in her home. From this landing page, she would select her role and provide the required information. This screen shows some examples of the types of information that might be requested. Of course, this could be further refined for any particular implementation. You can see that despite this being built on a state-of-the-art decentralized IT infrastructure, the user's experience is familiar very similar to many other websites and requires no specialized technical knowledge. Now that our prosumer has registered herself, she can register her new battery. The Flex toolkits have been built for communication with actual hardware. In this video, the battery and its inverter are represented by a Raspberry Pi with a crypto chip. The computing power required of the device is relatively modest and we are working toward hardware solutions that would require even cheaper and simpler deployment. Back to our prosumer, she can register her battery easily by scanning a QR code in the product's packaging or by entering the information manually. She provides basic information about the battery. Again, the data collected here is an example and could be different in any particular implementation. Our prosumer can see that she has submitted the registration successfully. However, in this video, we envision a further step to complete the registration of the battery. The installer who completes the physical work of connecting the battery can also confirm in the system that this new asset is what the prosumer claimed, that it is located where the prosumer said it was located, and that the prosumer is who she claims to be and owns that asset. The installer can simply confirm these things using his mobile phone or tablet. We see now the installer's view and he confirms the registration. Looking again at the prosumer screen, we see that the battery is now approved in the system. Now that the registrations are complete, the battery is ready to offer its flexibility to the market. We envision that the bidding strategy will be set by algorithms, aggregators, or other methods that do not require the prosumer to manage market participation directly. However, we do imagine that the prosumer could set some parameters. For example, if the prosumer registers an electric vehicle, she might tell it, offer flexibility to make as much money for me as you can while I sleep tonight, so long as I have 30 kilometers of range at nine o'clock tomorrow morning. In this video, we will directly tell the battery some of the offer parameters. The battery takes these parameters and sends an offer to the Flex system. Now let us look at our other category of user, one that requests flexibility. This type of user might want to do a few things beyond only requesting flexibility. First, if that user is a grid operator, it might want to see what assets are connected to its portion of the grid. Here, we can see an example of four batteries registered to different prosumers. We can be very precise with how much information is appropriate for that user to view. Perhaps it's the brand and model numbers of the batteries and where on the grid those are located, but not the names of their owners. Second, that grid operator might wish to define the physical constraints of the grid at different points so that the merit order can be constructed properly. This proof of concept simplifies the constraints, but shows in general how these could be entered. Let us look now at the order book. 
In this video, the Flex system has received not only the offer from our prosumer, but also three offers from other prosumers. The user can now enter a request for flexibility. Here, we specify positive flexibility as the generic product. But of course, this could be much more specific in any particular implementation. The Flex system now considers this request, our four offers, and the constraints, and it selects the offers that meet the request at lowest cost without violating any constraints. In this video, the Flex system bundles those selected offers and presents them to the requesting user. Here, we can see that three of the offers were selected. The one not selected was not the most expensive, but it would have violated a constraint. The users can now complete the offer lifecycle required by the particular market's rules. In this video, the requesting grid operator could accept or reject the bundle of selected offers, and then the individual assets that submitted those selected offers can confirm their availability. The last step is the activation of these assets. In this video, we imagine a signal from the load frequency controller to the flex system. The flex system then uses that signal and the merit order to determine which assets should be activated. We can see the battery has received the signal and is changing its behavior, and it reports back to the system how much flexibility it has provided relative to its baseline. The prosumer also can see the activation of her battery and the amount of compensation it has earned. Because the flex system and the asset already have communicated securely about the volume of flexibility, both activated and actually delivered relative to baseline, and because the flex system already knows the offered prices, it can quickly and efficiently calculate the amount of compensation that the asset's owner should receive. This completes our video. Thank you.